this is the question. It's uh, describing a particle which has, which has some um, energy or, or which has some mass. So this is gonna be my mc squared for the particle. So it says this particle muon decays into an electron uh, with a mass of mc squared. Uh, so this particle decays into electron and a massless particle. Another particle that's going the other way that will be massless. And the question asks, if all the lost mass is converted into the electron's kinetic energy, what is the Lorentz factor gamma of the electron being ejected in the decay? So since the question is telling us to make this assumption, we can make that assumption and go through the calculation. And I will spend some time at the end of talking about this question to point out how um, <laughs> the assumption we are making is not physical. And there's a reason I'm drawing the direction of this massless particle as going the other way as the electron. So we'll go through this question here. It says, okay, um, we are gonna say the loss to mass change in the mc squared is converted into electrons kinetic energy, which could be expressed. This is one of the formulas in the chapter, um, gamma minus one mc squared. And um, the thing to, um, eventually understand about energy and kinetic energy and total energy in special relativity is that really the simplest quantity is the total energy. And um, so except in questions like this, uh, we would do just to solve for the total energy. And then somehow if we need to, we'll calculate the kinetic energy by, uh, by subtracting out the rest energy. But for this question, we are kind of using more uh, I guess it's some uh, convoluted way of doing things because it's uh, conceptually closer to what you have been already doing in, um, in non-relativistic mechanics. So change in the mc squared, the change in the, the rest energy is uh, simply gonna be the mc squared here, the rest energy of the muon minus the the rest energy of the electron, mec squared. So I can actually work out an answer here. Oh, I think I can actually do it in my head. <laughs> um, it's gonna be 105.7 minus 0 0.511. So within four significant figures, it's gonna be 105.2 uh, MeV. That's the rest difference in the rest energy. And following the instruction in the question, we are gonna assume that this goes into the kinetic energy of the electron, gamma ups, minus one, mec squared. So I can solve for gamma minus one. Uh, gamma minus one is equal to this quantity, 105.2 mev divided by Oh yeah, I could be careful, this is the unit quantity. <laughs> the mass of the electron times C squared. And this is just a numerical quantity, uh, 0 0.511 MeV. So, uh, oh, I can, I guess I can just do this in the calculator. Um, so, so, you know, when I do this number, it's gonna give me something close to 200 more or less. So for gamma, it will be 200 plus one. So um, this is uh, the place where you are beginning to see what we sometimes call ultra relativistic situation approximation, where the amount of difference that comes from the rest energy kind of starts to not matter so much. <laughs> so, so in this particular case, it will be the answer here will be 105.2 MeV over 0 0.511 MeV, do the calculation in a calculator, plus one. That's gamma, as uh, what you would get if you solve for there. And for calculating the velocity of the electron, there's a quite um, simple relationship between gamma and velocity or beta. The symbol I prefer using is 
beta, uh, which is the velocity in the unit of C. In fact, the way to state it here, the number that is being asked for here is actually beta. So in terms of beta, gamma can be written as one over square root of one minus beta squared. And if you invert this relationship, you know, go through all the algebra, I do it multiple times in the course, so I won't do it again. But I, because I do this often, I have it memorized. Beta is equal to square root of one minus one over gamma squared. So, um, so you do have to be careful here. Now, uh, when you are calculating gamma, it's not necessary to, for you to keep six significant figures. If you only kept uh, three significant figures here, that'll be fine. But because gamma is such a large number, it's a three digit number. So when you square it, it'll be what, six digit number. So one over that six digit number will be very small. So one minus that will be small, uh, or it'll be very close to one. So when you take the square root, it'll be very close to one. So that's why the question asks you to specify it in one part in one million, because at these ultra, relatives, ultra relativistic speeds, um, beta has, to, because it, there's just gotta be so many nines. Um, so when you say six significant figures, my guess is the first five of those digits are just nines. It's a question of, okay, what's this number here? Is it a nine, is it a six? So, so watch out for that. Now, the reason I want you to go over this question is really to point out uh, what this note says. And in fact, the number we calculate here will be, I think it will be significantly wrong. There are situations where it's not significantly wrong, but I think uh, once it's in an ultra relativistic case, that what it's pointing out here actually becomes right. I think about half of the energy difference actually goes to into the, the massless particle. And, um, and it has to be that way. And um, when I first drew this picture without being prompted by the question, I uh, drew these two decaying particles as going out in opposite directions. And the reason for that had to do with momentum conservation. So situation like this, decay of a single particle into multiple particles, it's uh, easiest to think about and analyze in the reference frame where the initial particle is at rest. And in that reference frame, it has a zero momentum. And momentum is conserved in special relativity, which means the total momentum of these outgoing particles have to add up to zero. So whatever kinetic energy that electron has and whatever momentum is associated with kinetic energy, you know, P is equal to gamma mv, that has to be canceled out by the momentum of this uh, massless particle, what you will learn later as being neutrino. Oh, actually, uh, uh, <laughs> muon decays into electron and two massless particles. <laughs> there's a muon neutrino and electron antineutrino. Um, so there's actually two of these. So and the total sum of those uh, momentum particles, this has to be equal to this in magnitude so that uh, the net momentum will be zero. And, um, and depending on the arrangement, I think uh, if uh, the the rest energy of electron were closer to muon, then uh, electron could carry away most of the kinetic energy while will, while still carrying equal amount of momentum. But in this ultra relativistic case, these two will end up carrying about equal amount of ener total energy and uh, momentum. And uh, you saw a hint of that here that the mass of the electron actually didn't really matter all that much in the grand scheme of things. So, so we have a different question that uh, I wrote that's not from the textbook uh, that actually treats a situation like this in a fully correct way. So, so you will see that. Um, but uh, for the purpose of this question, um, the assumptions that they're asking you to make that makes it easier, which is why the question asks you to make those assumptions. 
Um, now, just as a caution, the fact that uh, the actual amount of energy carried by electron is about half as much as what we are assuming here, it does not mean V is half as much. That's the you know thing to remember about. <laughs> v will actually still be quite close to what it was already. It's you know it, maybe take off one of the nines. I think that's what will end up happening. 